If you were interested in the flat earth theory around 10 years ago and wanted to see what it had to offer, then you may have ended up watching Mark Sargent's Flat Earth Clue series. And it may or may not have the desired effect, converting you to the world of flatties. So I think it's vital that an opposition series exists, one which debunks everything in the original Flat Earth Clue series. This is that series. Hello all and welcome along to another video with me, Simon Dan. Thanks very much for joining me. Okay, let's crack on with this one then, shall we? In today's Flat Earth Clue, which Mark calls Souls of the Solar System, he focuses on the Apollo astronauts. Let's see how this goes, shall we? This clue looks into the recent past, or more specifically, an odd but interesting piece of conspiracy lore. What I hope to show here is an example of how an enclosed system once revealed, can change the world very quickly and in ways you may not have realized. To start, we need to go back a little ways to a controversial 2004 documentary called Astronauts Gone Wild. For those of you who missed this strange little gem, the summary is this. The producer-director Bart Winfield Sibrel went out to prove that all the moon landings were elaborate hoaxes. To do this, he set up interviews with the Apollo astronauts, giving them the impression that the interview was just routine. Ah yes, the ambushing of elderly astronauts with a camera crew, badgering them and demanding them to swear on the Bible. What a lovely thing to do. He then produced a Bible and asked each of the astronauts to swear on the book before the interview started. The interview was then supposed to be a series of detailed technical questions designed to trip up the astronauts. How someone with the intellect of Bart Sabrell could possibly trip up a NASA astronaut is funny to me. It really, really is. During the process, there was quite a bit of tension and some very uncomfortable moments, including one actual fist fight. Now, I'm not recommending that anyone actually go out and watch this hour-long documentary. For me, the astronauts have had to live with this guilt a long time, and leaving them alone seems like the humane thing to do. It's the decent thing to do, and this section here is what sets Mark apart from your average flat earther. He's not horrible. He's a pretty decent person. Wrong, but an okay guy, and I'll definitely have a pint with him at the pub. What interested me, and moreover what piqued my interest then, wasn't the unoriginal questions the reporter posed, but how the astronauts reacted to the Bible itself. None of the Apollo pilots would put their hand on it and swear that they went to the moon. In fact, most treated the book like it was made of plutonium. This puzzled me for years, because it went against the basic rules of any cover-up, one of which is lie about everything. Now, what Mark fails to mention here is that the astronauts already gave on-the-record congressional testimony where lying is a crime. Saying that none of them would swear is cherry-picking the reactions of people rightly annoyed at being called frauds. Now, the pilots of the Apollo program had done many interviews over the years, many televised, and had been going through their song and dance without really any instances of contention. So why not just go through the motions again? It is, after all, just a book, right? People lie under oath all the time. It's called perjury. And every country has an extensive system of laws and punishments to deal with it. These punishments don't seem to stop the people from committing perjury, and you can read about it almost every day. Furthermore, the astronauts were not in court. This was just a room, sometimes their own home. So swearing on the book f would, for all intents and purposes, be meaningless. Surely that tells you how annoyed they were then. They're being accused of faking their life's work and then asked to validate it with a parlor trick. Refusing isn't suspicious, it's perfectly human in these circumstances. The only thing proven here is that harassment annoys people. And this sat in the back of my head for years 
because it didn't make sense. Why would astronauts, trained by a very large military science program, be afraid of just putting their hand on the book and just tell one more lie? Well, for them, it may have been more than just a book. It may have been a symbol of something much bigger. You see, for you, me, and almost everyone else, a holy book is a symbol of faith because the creator or creators have yet to be revealed. But if you knew that the creators were real, then the book becomes something much more tangible, more relevant, more sobering. Plenty of Apollo astronauts were openly religious. Buzz Aldrin literally took communion on the moon. Apollo 8 read Genesis from lunar orbit. If the book scared them, they got a funny way of showing it. What actually happens is a man shoves a Bible in front of an astronaut's face and then demands them to swear on it. The face is hardened, the interview ends. End of. Or more to the point, the Apollo astronauts would have been let in on the enclosed system during their tenure with NASA, and over the decades, this system created certain truths for these men, one of which is, someone could be watching. Now, whether the builders slash creators are actually watching every little thing we do can be debated, but if you have proof that they are real, then the thought of your every move being scrutinized is a very real possibility. This is what you and I may suspect, but don't feel. So Mark is postulating here that these Apollo astronauts were told the truth about the creators of his world. But surely this means they would have sworn on that Bible out of fear. The Apollo pilots, however, are a different story. If they were shown how the world really looked, then their attitude towards the book takes on a whole new meaning. In fact, it didn't have to even be a Bible. It could have been an encyclopedia or a piece of wood because it was the idea that made them pause. And if you're still not getting it, then I'll ask you directly. If you actually saw some of the creator's handiwork and knew that there was a chance you were being watched and there was a scorecard involved, would you swear against that and lie about something? Well, if they were shown about these creators, and if the moon landings were a way to trick people by NASA and these creators, then yes, you would, wouldn't you? Surely, to keep them happy. Would you roll those dice and take the chance? Or to put it another way, everyone has gotten frustrated about something, then looked up and cursed the sky. Would you still do that if you knew that a creator was up there and possibly listening? That's just one example of how knowledge of the enclosed system changes people. The astronauts didn't want to roll the dice and lie because there was a real fear of retribution. And while they were confident that a bolt of lightning wasn't going to strike them down, they also weren't going to push their luck. Knowing a creator exists wouldn't turn a Bible into a lie detector. It wouldn't erase telemetry, independent tracking, or lunar geography. It would change how someone feels, not what the instruments recorded. And we all take on the same approach in daily life. Everyone who drives has run a stoplight. We know when we see the yellow light that it's too far away. So we hit the gas and hope for the best. Well, I don't know about you, but I certainly wouldn't, Mark. Orange light means slow, not accelerate. Especially if the traffic is light and we aren't putting anyone in danger. But you take that very same intersection and put a red light camera on it. Well, then things change, don't they? Knowing or believing that a creator exists might change how someone behaves, yes. But again, it doesn't change what instruments record. A Bible oath ambush produces no data, no measurements, and no legal standings. Apollo produced all three repeatedly. Do you hit the gas and roll the dice? Not a chance. You hit the brakes and hope that you can stop in time because you are being watched. You may not be a model driver by any sense of the word, but you understand this rule and this place and you don't break it. And this one aspect is why I'm pushing so hard to see the enclosed system revealed. Because as a civilization, we seem to be only as good as what we can get away with. 
This isn't an issue with freedom. It's an issue with doing the right thing. You know that running red lights is a bad idea. The camera is a reminder of that. Imagine all the things that would change for the better if the enclosed system was revealed. Something that doesn't exist, that people have got no evidence for, cannot be revealed, Mark. Remember that. Would you lie to hurt someone? Would you rob a bank, commit fraud, or embezzle? Would you steal anything unless your life depended on it? And while people would still get angry and fight, would they maim each other? Would they kill? Would anyone knowingly commit murder? Would you bully or extort people for profit? In fact, knowing that the world was created, would you do anything malicious towards anyone? Many times I've seen the streets of the Guildhall Walk in Portsmouth at 2am. With enough alcohol in you, people will do what they want, regardless of who is watching Mark. Trying to claim that an enclosed system created by someone, or something, would make people better is incredibly naive, Mark. If the world is not a globe, but instead enclosed, then wars end. Hate crimes end. Maybe not overnight, but quickly. Because you may be, for the first time in your life, actually accountable for your actions. Listen, believe whatever inspires you to be kind, genuinely. But don't confuse better behavior with better evidence. Lasers, rocks, and telemetry decide the moon landing. And I think that's where we're going to end today's episode of the Bunking Mark Sergeant's Flat Earth Clue series. Let me know in the comments below what you thought of this particular one, as I say we're all done and dusted for another one. Thanks so much for watching today, it is very much appreciated. If you enjoyed it, please do consider subscribing to the channel, uh, and a big thumbs up for this video would be appreciated too. I've been Simon Dan, have yourselves a great day, and I'll see you tomorrow for the return of Level Earth Observer. See you then. <laughs>